So we met a nice couple from Moore Park and um, they asked if we heard someone yelling help last night at midnight. Of course, Sean and I were out. We were totally zonked. We didn't hear it, but she said somebody, um, some coyote was trying to get in their tent. Uh, but we were warned at the gate that they do have a coyote issue here. So we are hiking up to this, it's kind of a, t um, I don't know, it's kind of a gazebo up there. It's above the inn. We parked our car at the um, Texas Springs at the very end of the campground, there are some parking spots next to a restroom. And then we thought there was a trail, but there isn't. At least not yet. Maybe we'll find one. We know there's a trail from the inn, but we'll just make our way up there. Well, we found the trail. I think it just washed out from all these storms it doesn't go that way. Oh, and there you can see the van now. I can along the spine of a crocodile. They're sitting on the trail. I can't go any farther. Almost there. Nice view of Telescope Peak up here. I don't think I've been here since the 80s, John. I think the last time was when I took that class and we camped out at the Tinto Mine. Here's a good view of the inn. Now, when we used to stay here, none of those cottages down below were here. So none of those were here. It was just the upper part. And this gives you an idea too of the campgrounds that are here at Furnace Creek. So this one on the pavement there, that's called Sunset. We parked up at Texas Springs, which is there, but we were camping down below. It's the only one that takes reservations here is the one down, I don't know, it's on the other side of the highway. Um, and then there's another smaller private one that's run by the concessionaire and that one's called Fiddler's something. Oh, there's a monument down there. Did you see that? We can go that way. Yeah. Let's go down that way. We're going to head down and see what that monument says. Rusty red on her shoulder, I was cleaning her shoe. So what do you guys think? Could that be a weather balloon or is it too small? It just doesn't look like a normal plastic bag. We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed It was a mutual arrangement we both saw in two Can she walk in the fire? Can she run in the rain? Can she make it up the mountain?
gotta figure out how to get across this sucker. Watch out for the thorns. Let's, uh, let's cross here. Hooray, we found an opening. I wonder if it's the one the coyotes use. Okay, that's not too wet. Whoa! Whoa, wait a minute. That's pretty funny. I can't even remember the last time I saw a telephone booth. <laughs> Might be the only one left in the country. I don't want you guys to think we have ice cream every day because we don't and we don't even keep it at the house. But <laughs> that bunny tracks, that bun, what's it called? Blue, 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 blue no, blue bunny. Blue bunny? Blue, blue bunny ice cream. They have a, it's like a, oh, what do they call those? <laughs> ice cream cone. Yeah, but it's, um, it's like a drumstick. So yeah. It's like a drumstick, but this the flavor was bunny tracks and it was so good. I got to get another one before we leave. And here is our big, beautiful beast. That was a good hike. There's a good hike. Two miles. Sticks are a must. Gloves. We've got to put our gloves away. One of you sharp-eyed people noticed the brand on my gloves, which I got in Canada. And if you're ever in Canada, these, these have been great. These have been the best cycling. I don't think they're used mostly for cycling, probably workout gloves of some sort or weightlifting or whatever. Anyway, they've been awesome gloves. And when we go up to Canada again, I'm going to get some more. These are so good. Bunny tracks. Nice view for eating ice cream. When we used to stay at the Furnace Creek Inn, they had this kind of a switchboard. <laughs> and uh, I think they moved it down here. That's neat. I used to operate one of these when I had a job at a tennis club. Oh, that's a gas station. Portuguese stonemasons working under Steve Estevez. It's, how would you pronounce that? Estevez? Estevez. Of Madrid. Buildings. So this, the highway, I think, goes right there. And these were the buildings on the other side. And there was a gas station. And then this is part of the inn that's... probably 20 degrees colder up here at the pads. We're about 20 miles from the valley floor, probably above 2,000 feet, and it's uh, beautiful up here, especially because there's pretty much nobody here. We got it to ourselves. I'll do a time lapse. We're going to watch some stuff that we've downloaded and have a salad for dinner, and then we'll see you in the morning. double rainbow. It's actually sprinkling. Oh, and it goes all the way around. Wow, that is beautiful. Mm.
We're gonna charge our bikes up while we're driving to Ash Meadows. So we have an extension cord going through here and we put the bricks inside of our trasheroo and the bikes are plugging in there. We'll see how much chart, we're about half down. We'll see how much we get on the drive. Is it about an hour? Probably take us less than an hour to get there. Drive to Peralt from Ash Meadows is about an hour. Yeah, but we're just gonna go directly. Thanks to our viewers who are always giving us great tips. We're off to Ash Meadows National Wildlife Refuge. Ash Meadows was established to protect 26 endemic species of plants and animals, and one critter in particular, the Devil's Hole pupfish. Fuel station, Nevada prices, seven miles. Well, we'll see. Oh my gosh, look at all that water. Wow. Where's that cheap gas? It's a, it must be a hotel. Wow. We've never, I don't think we've ever been this way before. Oh, and then there's a, there's a bull. The gas station. Oh, they got, they've got an RV park over there, John, with plug-ins. Wow. Oh yeah, there it is. There's the gas station. Yeah. That's amazing. No idea. It's Nevada border prices, not really Nevada prices, because in Pahrump you can get it for another buck a gallon cheaper, I think. What'd you say it was here? Four thirty-five. Is it four thirty-five? Four thirty-five. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it's 350 or something in Pahrump. And look at that buffalo, that water buffalo, John. And they've got donkeys. Or, those aren't donkeys, those are burros. Those are desert burros. Hmm, that's weird. I don't want to get too close. You don't look too happy. Howdy. The refuge encompasses over 23,000 acres of spring-fed wetlands and alkaline desert uplands. Virtually all the water in Ash Meadows is believed to be fossil water, meaning water that entered the groundwater system tens of thousands of years ago. Tires. Why would they? Why would they do that? Protect your fence posts from wind, rain, snow. I don't know. That's weird. Maybe the whole thing is just buried tires. Look at that water. That's quite a big office, isn't it? That's yucky. <laughs> This area used to be the Carson Slough, which was the largest wetlands in Nevada. And then when the pioneers and others came, they drained the, they drained the wetlands and leveled the landscape, over pumped the groundwater basin until the, the pupfish, the water for the pupfish, the uh, devil's hole pupfish up here, we're gonna go, we'll go up that area. And uh, until the water was sinking so that they, they weren't going to survive. And fortunately, the land, the uh, Nature Conservancy bought the land from a developer who wanted to build 30,000 homes out here. Can you believe that? <laughs> oh, well, anyway. <laughs> um, and so they've saved it. It was uh, established as a National Wildlife Refuge, I think, 84, John, 86, something like that. And boy, sure glad they did. It's beautiful out here. And we're walking out to Crystal Spring right now.
So this water flows all the way to Badwater Basin. Interesting. So the Pahrump pool fish are extinct in the wild. I guess they saved some somewhere. Ash Meadows Amargosa pupfish. Huh. They're laying out springs to make the Calvada Lakes had already begun in 1982. Wow. Would have overused three times the water resources available. Of course. Two city born here. It reminds me of California City. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, exactly. I was thinking California City. Yeah. Blue. These are blue too. I didn't know they were. Oh. Wow. So cool. 2,800 gallons of fresh water every minute. Wow. Thanks to all of you who have recommended we come here. This place is great and a gorgeous day. It's not, it's not hot at all. Now we're going to go off to the Devil's Hole, and then there's another spot where I guess there's a pool. Seven point four earthquake in Oaxaca, Mexico, created these waves in the pup, in the uh, Devil's Hole. The Devil's Hole pupfish is a critically endangered species found only in Devil's Hole. It is a small fish of less than 1.2 inches, varying in coloration based on age and sex. Males are a bright metallic blue, and females are more yellow. Its lifespan is 10 to 14 months. In 2013, the population was believed to be 35, but by 2023, 263 pupfish were observed. While you could drive out to Devil's Hole, you won't actually see the fish as the openings are protected by fencing. But on April 30th of 2016, three men vandalized Devil's Hole, discharging firearms, oh, wow. shooting locks, that and destroying security hole. systems. One man swam in the pool, damaging the rock shelf the fish utilize for food and spawning. The men were identified within 10 days and prosecuted. Two received a year on probation and the third sentenced to a year in the prison. The population of fish was down to 35 and when they started their captive breeding program. I don't know if they call that with fish. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. Anyway, they, um, the pups only produce one egg a day. Uh, no, no, no. The fish only lay one, one egg at a time. I don't know how many they lay in a day, in a day but um, in one year, the, when that film that we watched down there, it produced 100 fish in one year from their program. It's over 500 feet deep of an unknown extent. That's amazing. <laughs> the water temperature is 92 degrees. Yeah, there's a limestone shelf where they lay their eggs. And the heat and everything got that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's where those guys who broke in yeah. walked all over it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, some idiots, young adult males broke in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, you want a synonym for, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I <don't know>. idiot. <laughs> anyway, they uh, broke in and swam. <laughs> they catch the guys? Do you know? Uh, one guy turned himself in or something. Okay. Like. I don't know the whole story. Oh, you used to be able to park up here. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Anyway, we're going to go up to hole number two. Oh, wow. That is quite, 
quite the So deep you can't even see water. I almost wonder if a miner didn't dig the hole and then break through to that water. Doesn't it look that way kind of? It looks a bit like a mine shaft of yeah. sorts. Yeah. If you have a 4x4, four four, this road apparently goes to Pahrump. called Point of Rocks. What a nice little facility. <laughs> Don't ditch a fish. Who would think of doing that? <laughs> Hopefully nobody that comes here. John found this iPhone at Point of Rocks. It's an older phone, uh, the, one of the red ones. And he had heard somebody when we were at the visitor center say that they lost a phone. So we found it, we're returning it to the visitor center, but I wanted to tell you guys, I've talked about this before, but there's no number on the face of it. Um, and if you take a picture and write your phone number on it using some other program like um, Snapseed or Pixelmator or something like that. Write your write the recovery phone number, not your phone number, maybe your your partner, whomever, and so that your screensaver is a phone number somebody can call if they find your phone. So write on there if you find this phone, call and then give your number because this has nothing on it. Hopefully they'll come back and retrieve it. That was a great stop. I highly recommend it. And we couldn't do the cabin because the road is closed because of mud. Now we're going to head south toward Quartzsite. It's not too bad. It's just mostly on the back side of this back here. And then we got some mud. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, we made it through kind of rush hour traffic in Las Vegas. It wasn't too bad, but never fun. And we're now south on, we're, we're actually in Searchlight, Nevada, which is um, a small town, a couple of gas stations, casinos, and we're parked at a Chevron. There's a kind of a truck parking area. So we will stay here tonight, hopefully not have any problems. I overlander said it, it was okay. <laughs> and John is going inside to see if we can get something to eat. And while he's gone, I'm going to clean up this mess. There's a mess back there. And John just called me to tell me that there's a beautiful sunset. And there is. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Hmm. But it's cold out here. We actually had a good night's sleep here in Searchlight last night at this gas station. And we're going to head down to Quartzsite to go to the big tent event, which I've never done. I've been to Quartzsite during January, but not for that event. It's supposed to start today, I think, and then we will head back home.
got a nice tailwind, so we're getting 24 miles per gallon. Plus 5%. Yep. Back into California for a few minutes before we go back into, before we go into Arizona, right? Quartzite was a last-minute decision inspired by a few Pleasure Way owners who were gathering near the Big Tent event. By the time we arrived, only Colleen, a solo full-time traveler, was still there. She shared some of her upgrades, including her Wilco swing hitch with spare tire holder. And then another Pleasure Way owner saw us drive in and came over to say hi. It turned out that Chris lives near us in Newport Beach. John. What have you got there? Mint chip and cappuccino crunch. And this, what type of, what type of ice cream is this? This is Thrifty, which is sold at Rite Aid. But they make a good ice cream. And seven dollars for two big scoops. Massive. transit there is no camber and no caster adjustment so you're going to have that our gen 3 arm has the caster adjuster built into it so you can adjust it on the vehicle then you have the options of going to a 2.5 or a 2.0 or a 2.5 shock in the rear and the advantage is height there's the advantage in the quality of the dynamic. quality of the ride we are here at the WeldTech booth, which is the only only thing we've seen at this show so far that we've been interested in. Yeah, the ice cream. Yeah. Oh, the ice cream. You can't, you know, oh, well, who that's, doesn't love yeah, the ice cream? Yeah, ice cream. Okay, but we're here with Jeremy from WeldTech, and he's going to tell you about this brand new product they have for the Ford Transit. Okay, so our goal at WeldTech Designs is to provide any Ford Transit owners the best possible suspension available for them. So if you have a two-wheel drive, an all-wheel drive, or even a transit trail, we have a suspension package for you. Now, what we are really excited about is our new kit is a 2.5 King coilover for all of those transits. It's going to give you two inches of lift, which is amazing. It's fully adjustable, adjustable as far as in the shock itself, as well as the height of it. There's like so many adjustments, it's just, it's crazy. That's like a whole nother video that we're gonna do together. But we have rear shocks for it. We're gonna have springs. We have lower control arms as well. We also have support brackets because we're really finding all the weak links in the Ford Transit suspension that it is a unibody. And you know, most of these vehicles, we want to drive farther. And that's the whole point. With WeldTech Design Suspension, our goal is to help you be driven further. So, and we think that with our new product lineup, you're gonna be able to do that, have fun, and um, be way better than a transit trail for less money. <laughs> goal is like start off with the very best and be done with it because even with the King Shocks, totally rebuildable. You're never buying another shock again. Like you're not, it's like, okay, I put 100,000 miles on it. Okay, we can change the oil in it and be done. Like oil change like a car. You wouldn't put a new motor in your car you know, after so many miles. So same sort of thing goes with this. That was totally worth it just for that. And also for meeting Colleen and uh, Chris. Um, and that's the way it works with some of these things. You don't, you think, oh, should I go? I don't know if it'll be worth it. And you go and it's almost always worth it. <laughs>
Chris's. Is that the Dodge? Yeah. Okay, we found a spot for the night, a free spot. And we, so we were over here visiting with Colleen. And then we came down the 10 to the Dome Rock Road area. And I like it out here. There's uh, cell service and much better views because there are far fewer people. Hey, we could hike up to the top of that little dome. That's cool. We'll have to do that. I like that. I got a saguaro here. Let's see, much better spacing. <laughs> and there's the 10 right there. So very little road noise. If you're wondering how Quartzite got its name, there is quartz everywhere. Just everywhere. We're not going to make it to the top of that, but this is a great spot to come back to and explore on our bikes. And now we got to get back so I can do a time lapse because it might be a beautiful sunset. The best part of this lifestyle is that no matter where we go, we always find friends. Get into the more fun-filled and action adventures. This is a nicer place than Corsair Metro. It says we're three hours and forty-two minutes from home, so that's probably four and a half. But it's only six 